Welcome to Mark Arnold's Finance. I have a great video for you guys. I have three big tech companies that I have in my portfolio that I wanna go over and compare them against each other and come up with first, second, and third place. I think this will be a great video to do because I think it helps provide more information for others to consider uh, these companies and what information I put forth and then go further and do your own research and see if these are companies you wanna buy, buy more of, sell, who knows. So before I get started, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who subscribed and all of you viewing this channel. Uh, if you're new, be sure to subscribe and give it a shot. I'm very transparent. I try to provide the best quality and information I can. And so we're gonna start with that transparency by looking at my portfolio performance. We will see here that it is barely in the red at about you know, 0.57%. And it's kind of been in this range of going below in the red by 1% uh, or less and in the green by 1% or less. So it's been pretty flat over the last like four weeks. Um, but if you'd like to pause the video, look at all these companies and their performance and ask me any questions in the comments, I'd be happy to discuss. But we're gonna focus on three companies in the technology sector up there in the left, top left. That's gonna be Microsoft, Amazon, and Meta. Now I left out Cisco because I don't consider that a big tech company. I can cover that another time if you guys would like, but we're gonna focus on the other three. And quickly, Microsoft's been the best performer it's up nine and a half percent. That's after its big fall, so I'm doing really well there. Amazon's barely in the red at 0.17. Uh, it's been kind of flirting with the red and the green, just like my portfolio overall. And then Meta, of course, has been uh, heavily in the red for me ever since its earnings earlier this year, and it's negative 30%. So with that said, let's get right into it. What I wanna do is I wanna briefly just do an overview of each company and then get into a chart that I created to compare the three with different metrics. So the first company we're gonna talk about is Amazon. Now Amazon is known for having many products. Some people say too many, uh, but that's just what they do. And they create a lot of, you know, they buy out businesses, they create new businesses, and they have a lot of new technology that they adopt. And so I think what this does is it's just them trying to, to throw those darts and see which ones land. And so far they have had products and businesses such as Whole Foods, Twitch, Ring, Echo, Alexa, Audible, and hundreds, maybe even thousands more. Their technology is impressive. They have in their grocery stores, not just Whole Foods, and it's not all Whole Foods, just some, but they have Amazon Fresh, another grocery store in certain cities. They have a grab and go technology service where you walk in, you grab what you wanna you know, take home, and you just walk out and it charges you. It knows what to charge you. So no checkout process, how awesome is that? That saves you a lot of time. And it's just things like that that Amazon likes to get into. So I think they, they're very innovative. Uh, maybe they are too spread out, but that's just what they do. Um, Amazon also, you know, they have a big e-commerce shopping presence, obviously. And we'll see here that um, with their e-commerce market share on the very top in the section one, in the US, they dominate. They're almost at a 50% compared to the others and you know followed by eBay, Apple, Walmart, Home Depot, Best Buy and Costco. I mean eBay is in second place and they're only 6.6% of the US market share of the e-commerce side of things. But Amazon like look at that 49.1%. That's impressive. Now, if we take that out to the global scale which is in that second section, uh, they fall behind Alibaba pretty heavily, but they're still in second place followed by um, some other Chinese companies like JD.com, but then eBay, eBay Shopify, um, I don't know that Rakuten one, but Walmart follows that as well. But they're still healthy in the global aspects of things. Another big part of their business that I think people uh, undervalue is their Amazon Web Services. This is a huge part of their business. And if we look at their market share, it's 33% and they're in first place. Next is Azure with Microsoft, and then Google Cloud, then Alibaba, so on and so forth. So they are clearly the winner, and they're far in first place. And I think with their Amazon Web Services, which is uh, heavily the cloud part of their business, this is something I don't think that investors are really respecting enough. I think it has a huge future and will provide huge future profits for them. And so that's something to keep in mind. Now next I wanna talk about Meta. This is more controversial of a stock than the others, but I will say that they are the social media king. Uh, they're the number one in the world. In fact, their monthly users is 3.6 billion. Yes, 3.6 billion, that's massive. And of course they have Facebook, WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, but just 
So just keep in mind, 3.6 billion people it reaches each month. So they have almost half of the world's population on one of their social media apps using them monthly. That is amazing and that's a huge opportunity for Meta in my opinion. Now, of course, they were Facebook, now they're called Meta. That's because they're getting into the Metaverse. Now, you can disagree with me, but I think the Metaverse has a huge future. Just what I've seen so far and got to experience myself with the Oculus, which was a very popular um, thing to buy this last year and into this year, I think it's got a bright future. So I want to show you this really cool video. It shows Meta's Metaverse and it actually has Mark Zuckerberg in it. And I just think it's fascinating. So enjoy this video and we'll talk in a second. Maybe you'll get some friends together for some three on three. Maybe play pickup with people on the other side of the world. Or imagine your Facebook cycling group does an AR charity ride. Let's go! Complete with a leaderboard. Maybe you'll be able to train with the best, like you're right there with them. Like Lee Kiefer, Olympic gold medalist. Fun guy. Fun. Don't be scared this time. <laughs> you seem like a natural. Whoa. All right, that's a little too, too realistic. I'll see you later, Lee. That was fun. So what did you guys think of that? Wasn't that, I, I just think it's pretty cool. I think there's so much potential with the metaverse and that people don't even realize like it's more than just being in a virtual reality it's connecting with people that you don't have in a you know a quick drive away you know if somebody's in another state another country you can interact with them in a new way now and i think it's fascinating and i think it goes way beyond that and i think meta being the first one to at least announce it which i think is kind of first to market i think uh, they have a great chance at being one of the top companies for market share when it comes to the metaverse in the future. So that's just my opinion. Now, the last company to introduce is Microsoft. This one is a high quality company. I just, I think this company does things so well. And obviously they have many, many, many products themselves. Um, so if we look at some of them, of course software is a huge part of their business. Uh, they have, they're in virtual reality. They're in the metaverse themselves. They have Xbox, they have Windows 365. I love Excel because I'm an accountant, so nerd alert there. But they have Azure, which is their own cloud side of things, which is in second place behind Amazon. So that's awesome to see. And it's growing at a faster pace right now than Amazon Web Services. Um, they also have LinkedIn, another great um, business that they bought that turned out really well for them that offers a lot of different other opportunities there's just so much with Microsoft. They're very subscription based, so that's very dependable reoccurring revenue. And I just think this is a high quality company. So now let's get into the fun part. Let's look at this chart I created and look at the metrics and compare them and pick winners. And in the end, a grand winner, first, second, and third actually. So let's start with um, looking at this first line, the PE ratio, the trailing 12 months PE ratio we will see that Microsoft is at a 26.52, which is actually towards the low end of what they're historically been at. They're, I've seen them in the 30s most of the time, so it might be a good time to look at Microsoft if you're considering their PE ratio. Meta is just below 12, super cheap. This company is cheap. And then you have Amazon, which is at a 53.41, which looks expensive, but you have to keep in mind, uh, unlike companies like Meta and Microsoft, where I think they really cater to investors, Amazon doesn't. They don't really care if they have huge swings in earnings and because they're spending cash like crazy here or there. So you gotta keep that in mind. This PE ratio of Amazon's, it has trended downward over the last decade. So it's getting smaller and smaller, which means they're growing, which is a good thing. So because Meta is the cheapest, they're green, uh, they're highlighted green, which means they win this one. Then the earnings per share, trailing 12 months versus the prior trailing uh, trailing 12 months, we will see that Microsoft has grown 30.52%, which is you know the highest out of the three, so they get the green, but quickly Meta is still healthy at 13.09%, but Amazon 
they're negative 21.16%. They didn't have very good earnings this last uh, quarter, this last earnings session, and it's really hit them hard with their stock price as well. If we look at their revenue growth over the trailing 12 months, Microsoft has grown 20.37%, which is phenomenal. Meta has grown the most out of the three at 26.77%, and Amazon just shy of 14% at 13.99%. Uh, so Meta takes it here. They've grown the most over the last 12 months. And if we take that out to five years, the revenue growth, um, you know, Microsoft is actually the lowest here, believe it or not, at 14.42%. Meta is a 33.67%, so they take it because Amazon's behind that at a 28.14%. Then if we look at the cash flow growth over the last four years, this is what I really uh, like to heavily you know, weigh when I look at companies as their cash flow growth. We will see that Microsoft has grown at a very healthy 26.05%. Meta's grown more though at 30.39%, and Amazon has just done phenomenal at 44.48%. So though these all are very respectful, Amazon takes it. They're the one that has grown the most. And it's surprising to me that Microsoft is in third, but it's nothing to laugh at. That's still very healthy cash flow growth. Then the dividend yield. So Meta and Amazon don't pay dividends. So this only applies to Microsoft. And because they pay dividend, I do like that. So I did put green on them, regardless uh, that the others don't pay it and have nothing to compare to. But I do like a company that pays at least some type of dividend. Uh, so their dividend yield is 0.98%, so it's low, but you also get a company that grows pretty quick, so that's where you kind of get that offset with the price of your stock. And then their one-year dividend growth is at a respectful 10.71%, and their payout ratio is low at a 26%. So all everything with their dividend, I like, and I think their dividend growth, um, it just it's healthy enough where I'm okay with just that 1% yield right now. Now their debt to assets, if we compare the three, Microsoft is higher than I expected, but not in any kind of uh, red flag range. They're at a 52.7%. And with most tech companies, you know, they take out debt to fund their many, many ventures and business expenses. Uh, but Meta, if you will see there, they're at a very low 25%, which is phenomenal. And Amazon's towards the higher end at the 67.4%. So Meta takes it here. They just have very low debt, and I like to see that. Now, profit margin wise, this was fascinating to me. Microsoft kills it at 76.01%, but Meta comes in even higher at 86.21%. That is phenomenal. That's amazing. I love to see that. Amazon comes in at 50.6%, which is not, obviously, it's not bad. Anything above 50% to me is a great profit margin. So they just barely get above that. So that's respectful as well, but Meta just takes the, takes the cake here at 86.21%. Now, they all do stock buybacks, so that's something uh, that I didn't highlight anyone in green because they just all do it, and I just wanted to put that out there for information. Again, that helps us own more shares of a company, have more ownership of a company, shall I say, if they buy back their shares. Uh, it's beneficial to us as investors, so they all get yeses. If we move down to the analyst score, we will see here that analysts rate Microsoft at a 7.3 out of 10, so they're more bullish. Meta gets a slight higher rating. I think that's because they're so inexpensive right now at a 7.5, but analysts do not like Amazon right now. They put them at a 0.6, so very, very bearish. And I think that's just because of their prior earnings and the fact that they've overbuilt a lot of their distribution warehouses right now. I just, I don't think they also are considering the Amazon Web Services side of things. So we'll see what the future holds, but analysts don't like them. I would have rated them higher. Next one up is, I put this in here, is this company easily replicated? For all three, I put no, and I'll explain. Microsoft, I mean, Microsoft has such a huge moat. They have a huge market share in a lot of areas. It would be hard to replicate that. I'm gonna skip over to Amazon. Same thing for Amazon, huge company, huge moat, would be hard to replicate their e-commerce um, you know, hold uh, being number one in the market heavily, especially in the US, that that's gonna be hard to replicate. Now, Meta, they are not, and I will tell you why. Yes, anyone can create a social media app, but can you create an app that basically has half the world's population using your apps between the many different that you have? Plus, if you look into Meta, you'd be surprised at how many companies they own. If I remember correctly, 
They own uh, about 100 other companies that you never heard of. And plus they're getting into the metaverse. Uh, I just think this company is not easily replicated at all. So they all get no, which is a green, a positive in my book. Now the future, I am rating them on my own kind of thesis here on how bright their futures are. Uh, 10 is the best, obviously. So I think Microsoft is just one of the highest quality companies in the world. So I think their future is super bright. They have subscription-based services, which is very dependable revenue. So they're very high ranked here. Meta, I give a seven. I think they do have a very bright future, but they come with a little more risk because the metaverse is something that is either gonna work out extremely well for them or just be mediocre in my opinion. So that's to be determined, so they get a seven, but they still have their social media part of their business to fall back on, which is highly profitable in itself. Then we have Amazon. I put them as an eight. Obviously with the e-commerce side of things, they're king, they do so well there but their Amazon Web Services is just one that I think is being very undervalued right now and it shouldn't be. Uh, and you know they're not quite a nine obviously because Microsoft to me is a higher quality than Amazon, so they get an eight, so that's how I rate them. So if we look at this as a whole, we will see that in green, Microsoft takes six, Meta takes seven, and Amazon takes two. So with this chart, Meta is the winner they have more positive metrics than the others, which is surprising. I thought Microsoft would come in, but I think that's because Meta is so cheap. They have low debt, they have a high profit margin, and they have great opportunity in my opinion. So if I had to rate these from first, second to third, I would put Microsoft at first, just because it's such a high quality company, I'm a long-term investor, so that's the company that I think will be around you know, longer than I'm alive. In second place, I would choose, uh, this is hard. All right, I'm gonna pick Meta. I think they have fallen in their valuation so heavily. I think it's almost a no brainer to put some money in there for future growth. I think the metaverse, I am bullish on it, so that's where we may differ, but I think it has a very bright future, plus being the huge social media company they are and having that dominance is just something no other company has at this point. And I think Meta will figure out ways to get around the many challenges they have, and so they're in second place. Amazon is slightly in third place. I'm really bullish on them long-term as well. And I think that with the e-commerce side of things, I think you know that's the part of their business that might not grow as, as much as it has in the past, but their Amazon Web Services part is going to be humongous, I believe, and be a huge profit-generating machine. And this company obviously just, just puts money into a lot of things. So who knows what else will be successful for this company. So first is Microsoft, second is Meta, and third is Amazon. Let me know what you think and how you would rate these. And if you would buy any of these or have any differing opinions in mind, I'd love to hear it and start a conversation. I think it is a very interesting to hear what you guys think. Um, so this is my view on these three big tech companies I have in my portfolio. I'm definitely gonna buy Meta because I need to average down. Amazon, I'll probably add slowly because I have a decent chunk now. I don't think I need to add too much more. And then Microsoft will just be a regular buy for me because that's a forever stock in my opinion. I can see myself retiring with it. So thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know your feedback. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.